Home Assistant input helpers are a really convenient way of adding selectable controls to the UI, quick toggle access, and even allow for more complex automations. Let's cover a few different ways that I use input helpers in my automations and what you can use them for in yours too. So what exactly is an input helper? A helper in Home Assistant is kind of like your own customizable field that you can create inside of the Home Assistant UI that can help you to do various tasks that we are going to look at in a sec. To create a helper, head to configuration, click on automations and then click on the helper tab at the top and press add a new helper, where you will see that you have a few different types of input helper available. The first situation that an input helper is useful is for using it as a really quick way to be able to disable automations in one fell swoop, rather than having to go through and find and select each one manually. For example, if you have a guest or a holiday mode. When you go on holiday, there is probably a bunch of automations that you don't want to run when you are away because that would be wasteful, like your heating. So to be able to quickly disable all of these in seconds is a game changer. Same with if you had a guest round to stay, you may want to disable certain automations in certain rooms so as not to annoy the person staying in those rooms if they don't understand how automations work, then an input helper can be a super easy way to achieve this. First go to the helper section and create a new helper using the input boolean and call it a guest mode or a holiday mode or whatever you want. And what this is going to do is give you a simple on off toggle switch that can be added to your Lovelace if you want to. And basically it says whether or not the automation is on or the automation is off. And you can control multiple automations from this one toggle switch. Head over to the automations that you want to be able to control and add the input boolean as a condition with the state being on. I.e. if the input boolean is on, then the automation is on and will run. And if the input boolean is off, then the automation is off and won't run. Just be sure that if you have any existing conditions already in your automations that you use, that it's not going to conflict with any of them. Then hit save and repeat for any other automations that you want to be able to control with this one toggle switch. This is going to require a bit of work initially just to add this to all of your existing automations, but it should make your life much easier going forward. And you'll just need to make sure and add this as a condition for any future automations that you may create. Now, when the input boolean is set to off, the automation will still trigger initially, but that condition is going to prevent it from going any further and actually running any actions. The next way I use input helpers is as a configurable alarm clock or timer. So rather than having alarm clocks set on our phones, we use Home Assistant to do it instead because it's obviously much more configurable with the other things that we can do with it. So we can control the lights, the blinds, speakers, and lots of other things all from this one alarm automation. And the thing that triggers the alarm is where our second input helper comes in, the date time helper. What's great about this one is that it allows for changing the time that an automation runs at very easily. Now, of course, we could just go into the automation and change it in there, but for regular users, this isn't very easy and having a selectable time picker in your dashboard where you can go in, set the alarm you want and it automatically running the automation at that time is so much easier. First, go in and create a new helper and select the date time helper and give it a name for what its function will be and then select if you want date and time or just time. Hit save and then create an automation or edit an existing one. And then in the trigger section, select time as the trigger. And instead of entering a manual time, select value of an input helper and select the helper that you just created. Go ahead and add some actions that you want for the rest of the automation and hit save. And now this automation will run at whatever time the input helper is set to and will dynamically adjust the time that it triggers at whenever you change the time in the helper. Nice. The third way I use input helpers is for storing state that can be later used in automations, such as a run once per day only situation. So for example, when I walk into this office in the morning, I have the blind automatically open, the backlight to come on at a certain color temperature, and I have Google Home read an announcement, 
and this is all triggered by the motion sensor in this room. Now obviously if I leave the room and come back in, I don't want the announcement to keep being read over and over. So the way I get around this is by using an input helper that stores if the announcement has already been read for that day or not, and if it has, then my automation knows not to read that announcement again. Then later, when I get into bed for the night, the state of the helper will be reset so it's ready for the next day. There's a ton of other scenarios you could use this in also for when you only want something to happen once. To do this, create a new helper. Again, select the input boolean type and give it a name. Then there are two parts to this helper because we need to use it as a condition and then we also need to reset it so that it's ready to use for the next day. For the condition, there is again a few ways that you could do this. A simple way is to do exactly as we did earlier for the guest mode and add it as a condition which will either run the automation or not. But since we did that one already, let me show you a more advanced way. For example, I mentioned when I walk into this room, I want the blind to open, the light to come on and the announcement to happen. But if I were to add this in as say a normal condition and it had already run for that morning, then that means that my light would no longer come on whenever I walked in until the next day. And that is not what I want. So instead I'm going to use the choose action, which will allow all three to run if it's the first time or just the light only if morning mode has already been ran. And if that sounds a bit confusing, don't worry, it'll make sense in just a second. Down in the action section of the automation we want to run, I'm going to select choose from the dropdown and then select state and find the input helper that I just created. I'll set the state as on, meaning that morning mode is on and I want to run all three actions, which I will go ahead and enter into my automation. After that, you will want to add one final action and choose the call service action and search for the input boolean turn off action and attach it to your input helper. This means that after all the actions have been run, it will then set the input helper to off, indicating that morning mode has been run successfully. I'll then add a default action, which is what will happen if morning mode has already been run and then add one single action into the box to turn my light on. Now, whenever I walk into the office first thing in the morning, the automation will run all three actions and then it will set the input helper to off, which basically says that the automation has been successfully run. And then anytime I walk in after that, it will know to only run the normal action of turning my light on. The last thing we need to do is have a way of resetting the helper on a daily basis so that it's ready for the next morning. And the way I do this is by using my bed sensor, but if you don't have one of these, then you can just create a simple automation that runs once at 3 a.m. by using time as the trigger. If you're using multiple helpers for a one-time run state, then you can add them all into this one automation and reset them all at the exact same time. The final way I primarily use input helpers is as a way of creating easily selectable objects from your dashboards, which can be used in a plethora of different things. For example, a drop down in your dashboard that you can select different scenes for a room, or they can even allow for non-techie or non-admins to control automations in a way that they otherwise wouldn't be able to, either because of permissions or just not having the technical know-how. As a practical example, you could create an input helper dropdown that has your favorite radio stations on it and then create an automation that triggers whenever the dropdown is changed. Notice how if I leave the to and the from fields blank, this will cause the automation to run whenever the helper changes. Then using the choose action, I can add conditions to work out which option was selected and then using the new play media action, I can start playing a radio station on a speaker depending on which option is selected in the box. This could extend to a bunch of other things, selecting speeds and modes on a fan, modes on a robot vacuum, scenes, TV channels, maybe presets for a light, pretty much anything that has multiple options. So that is all the ways that I use input helpers in my home assistant. Hopefully that gives you some good ideas of what you could do with them and apply them to your own install. Take some of the principles and the concepts that we've discussed and then get them working with your own setup. In fact, drop me a comment down below with what you plan on using input helpers for in your setup 
or if you're already using them and what you are using them for. I get so much inspiration from reading all of your creative ideas. If you're looking for something else to watch, then check out this video over here where we discuss some common beginner mistakes that I see all of the time for people getting started with Home Assistant. Make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed and I will see you in the next video.